In 2015, I cross-pollinated some apple blossoms of this apple, William's Pride, with an apple called Vixen. Today we're going to look at some of the offspring of that. I think I have four different apples fruiting right here and taste a couple of them. So this is the parent apple, William's Pride. I don't want to eat that right now. It's going to ruin my taste buds. Anyway, it's a delicious early apple. Um, overall, it's just, it's hard to beat as an early apple overall. Like all, all things considered, performance, disease resistance, size, uh, beauty, flavor, you know, it keeps reasonably well for a summer apple. Just all things considered, you know, I mean, if I designed the perfect summer apple, would this be it? No, it wouldn't, but it's very, very good. And one thing that really holds true about this apple for me is just the scab resistance. It makes these perfect fruits. Um, I don't recall ever seeing any scab. So that alone is a, is a great thing, but it has other qualities that I'm interested in. So I remember in 2015, I cross-pollinated it with this apple called Vixen. Uh, Vixen is the closest thing there is to a large Wixen, if anyone's familiar with that apple. And it really is, it, it's just less intense. So it's a little, it's larger. So it's kind of like the flavor is a little more diluted, but it's a very interesting apple and it does uh, very, very much resemble a large Wixen. And I remember making that cross and thinking, why am I making this cross? Like I couldn't really figure out why I was doing it. And I had my doubts, but I just decided to go for it anyway and kind of make it sort of a wild card cross. I still don't know really, like I didn't really have a, very much of a logic. It's just like, these are two good apples. Let's just do it, you know? So this block of trees is trees from that year of, of 2015. And there's a, a block right in here. We'll count them in a second of those cro th that cross, the Williams Pride Vixen cross. One of them bore fruit last year and five out of, I think, seven flowered this year. And four of those, I think, set fruit. Let's do a count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so there are seven and four of those bore fruit this year. So you can see down here, there, there's some other, you know, trees in this row that have a little bit of fruit on them especially down here in these maple crosses. We'll take a look at those two. But clearly this block of trees produced fruit earlier than most of the trees in, in the block, which I found very interesting. So for some reason, this is a precocious cross. It may be because of the Williams Pride. It may be because of the Vixen. It may be because of the combination. I don't know. So last year we got to taste this apple, which has uh, got nicknamed Twang because it's kind of twangy. It's just a little bit of a tart, you know, acidic presentation. And I've been tasting these on and off this year, and so far I haven't really been that impressed. But we're, we're going to taste this now and just see what it's like. The tree uh, bore a lot of fruit this year, but it hasn't borne much exemplary fruit. And it keeps, it'll like fall off and get weird and funky. I think some of it had water core. A lot of the fruit that's left on the tree just is not ripe at all. Like it's just green. And that's puzzling because some of it has clearly been ripened, uh, past ripe, fallen off. But then there's this collection on here. I'm sorry, I'm trying to sort these two trees out because there's, there's actually two trees here. And one of them is very green and round and one is not. But yeah, I mean, the, these are clearly off Vixen down here and they are green. It's, it's very strange. So I don't know what to make of that. When I tasted this last year, one of my predictions was that it's going to have a long season. And that does appear to be true, but the quality has been very, very dicey. And I haven't really had one that I thought was great yet. Let's just try it. Hmm. It's actually kind of interesting. Another thing I remember predicting last year from the other video was that the essential character of this apple wasn't going to change, that it was still going to be this kind of tart presentation, uh, which is true, that it wasn't going to develop like an overwhelming amount of complex flavor, which it doesn't, but this is definitely more flavor, flavorful and a little deeper. The uh, texture is very, very fine grained. It's also just pretty easy to eat. Like it cleaves off in big chunks, but they crush up really fine, really fast and release actually quite a bit of juice. The whole flavor combination thing is just, a, it's a little bit peculiar. Like it's, it's stuck in some kind of limbo. I don't know what to make of this apple. At, at this season, I think it might make a good cooking apple, but Carrie Pippin's already 
ready right now for cooking so you know you'd have to head to head it with that and it's starting to get to the point now in in this season where there's going to be more apples and more options for things like that so if this apple happened in july i'd be excited about it um happening in august i'm like yeah not as exciting as i had hoped it would be this year there's an unpleasant flavor like i don't even want to say what what it <laughs> what it is but there's kind of an unpleasant lingering background flavor component that I'm not digging. So let's look at the rest of these. So here's another tree right next to it, same cross, has a lot of fruit on it, but I haven't um, seen anything close to ripe. They all seem to be this kind of green, just starting to redden up. So here's another one uh, that looks pretty interesting. Look at that, it has a lot of fruit on it and yeah, it's still quite green. You can just see though, it's, it is actually starting to redden up a little bit. So. This is again looking more like an early September apple, I guess. That's actually yellowing a little bit. What's up with this one? Yeah, that might be the first one to ripen. The birds don't get it. So this one flowered, but it didn't make anything. So one of the reasons I used Williams Pride is for the early ripening uh, effect genes, you know. So uh, Twang has that for sure. These two obviously don't have a, a super early thing going but I think this one may be ready. Okay, so the birds got on this and I'm gonna pick it. It's not very scented. So this tree only produced one fruit and I think I, I had it in some kind of bag, but obviously the birds got onto it anyway. This damage could have caused this apple to ripen early. So, you know, I'm not expecting it to be very good or at its best. There's always a learning curve just with any new apples, just figuring out uh, when when to pick it and eat it, you know. Sometimes just smelling it can help, but I'm really not smelling anything on this apple. So, let's try it. So a little surprisingly to me, because this is not something I encounter a lot in the trial rows, the myth is that when you grow apples from seed, you're going to get a lot of sour green apples, but I have not found that to be true. If anything, a lot of the apples that I'm interested in, I would inject, you know, were I to design it from scratch, I would put in a little more acidity. Like some of them are just too polite and a little bland. Cherub's a perfect example. Like there's that apple is so much going for it, but I think it's, it's one major drawback is probably going to be just a pretty low acidity and if you could just add that little zip back in there um, I think it would it would be a better apple so this has some flavor it's not really sweet hmm it's nice though it's actually pretty nice I like the flavor I want to keep an eye on this At this point I'd say this is a little more promising than twang it's a nice, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good size apple. I think the whole eating experience is just better. It's quite juicy. It, it's also pretty fine grain, but not like that one. With Twang, you can really tell that th th some crab apple genetics are, are welling up in that apple that make it that weird uh, super fine texture with like a little bit of translucency to it. This isn't really like that, but it is still really fine grain. Is this going to be like a Williams Pride Beater? No way. I don't see that happening, but it's very different. It's acidic enough to be a cooking apple, which is interesting. And the flavor, again, I, I don't know how to nail it, but it's uh, quite good. I like it. So I won't be surprised at all if in the future, when this apple is grafted out to a, a bigger tree somewhere and it's healthy and it's established and it's producing, and it'll start to produce more exemplary fruit, like more to its genetic potential. You know, think of a person, you, you know, if you're born starving to death in, in a slum somewhere, you're not going to develop right to your full potential. If you grow up somewhere where there's plenty to eat and you're healthy and you're happy and you get a lot of exercise, then you could potentially develop more to your full potential. So it's the same with apples. It's like I have this new seedling. It just started fruiting. It only managed to pull off one fruit this year, so it obviously doesn't have a lot of resources. It's not very well cared for. So when I get this grafted out to a bigger tree, which I'll do right away, grow it out on there so it has a full size root system under it, even then that branch has to establish itself for a year or two 
to, to start making exemplary fruit. So it's gonna be a little while down the road till we experience that. Hopefully this thing will produce uh, a few uh, fruits next year and uh, we'll see in the future, but this is somewhat promising and Williams Pride X Vixen 15-2, so number two. I'm definitely looking forward to tasting this one. It looks more like Vixen than any of the other uh, seedlings here. So that's interesting. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna eat this later and finish it. The twang, I'm not so sure. I don't, there's something wrong with that apple. I, I think that's gonna be a, a call eventually. So these are cookie bags, um, you know, from a bakery, like cookies or pretzels, they put them in these. And they're folded and stapled once. That's the bag I end up using the most. I don't like these, they have a black lining and they, they won't allow the apple to color up at all. Now this, however, looks interesting. Where's my tag? Maple with chestnut. So if we look at the overall tree, it's got these two columns, no side branches. So it has the columnar trait of maple, which means it's gonna grow very narrow, like a column with minimal side branching. Like the side branches that come out will tend to go out a little way and then go up. So that's a very interesting and useful trait that's passed on and from the maypole parent. With the size of these fruits, um, it just looks interesting. Like I was so interested that I made some cross pollinations on it. You can see that one's Centennial and I think I made another one over there. We'll keep an eye on that. It's obviously not gonna be early like chestnut crab is. And here are some more maypole crosses. So you can see the general growth of a lot of these trees is that columnar type. See again, here's a small branch, but they don't really go anywhere. This one has multiple branches but they all kind of go out and up they're very dwarfed uh, meaning that the buds here are very close together so the tree may grow the same amount of buds as a normal tree but they're packed into a short space so it's it's literally a dwarf it's a genetic dwarf this one is the most interesting so far here we have a very columnar tree a very healthy looking columnar tree too i might add uh, just look look at the size of these leaves and how green they are. Look at that, that. and then kind of scan down the row here, scan down a row of these other columnar trees, and then look at that. So, you know, there's something there too. Like it just looks healthy and vigorous and happy and, and deep green, like these deep dark green leaves. And the fruit is big. So we have these large uh, red fleshed apples. They're a beautiful, uniform, even color. Chances are they're gonna be fairly primitive and not anything to write home about, but we'll see. And I'm certainly looking forward to uh, finding out. Now I'm not gonna pick one of these now because I've already done that a couple times and they're just very far from ripe. Um, this is a Wixen cross, by the way. This is a Maypole Wixen, and I think maybe all of these might be Maypole Wixen. There's a couple others fruiting here that could be interesting, but look at this. Very small, like stunted, looking apples. Those are gonna be very, very primitive. Very unlikely they're gonna be any good. This one's a little more promising, you know, that's getting to be where it could end up the size of Wixen or even a little bigger. And here's another one. You can really see the growth pattern here, right? Like, look at that one. So we have, you know, three columns. They have very, very close packed buds. They're tall, but there's no side branches, not a single side branch on that entire tree. So you can keep these trees growing like these tight little columns. Like you don't have to have all three of these branches even. You could have, you know, prune that to one and maybe have some side branches come out and go up if you want or not. You know, they're very easy to keep as just a tight little cluster of, of uh, fruit bearing wood. And, and there's just fruit bearing wood like all up and down here that's just covered in fruit spurs. On a good year, you could easily see this thing just like a, like a rope of fruit almost. And uh, I don't expect much out of this one either. All right, well, within the rest of this row, there's a lot of fruit uh, that hasn't been tasted, a lot of stuff that I've gotten to taste before, but we're gonna get to taste again and again as these trees live longer and produce more, the, you know, they might produce more exemplary fruit. I'm just hoping that this year we get a good red flesh development because last year the red flesh development was so poor that some of the red fleshed apples in here didn't have red flesh at all. Looks like I failed to thin this one. This is a tree I call, uh, nicknamed Big Red. It's a red flesh apple, nice large, 
fruit. Wow, I really didn't thin in here. Looks like we have some scab. It, it's been one of these apples that's kind of promising. It could end up being really good, but I just, it's not quite there yet. And I'm hoping as the tree matures again, that it will produce better fruit. So very much looking forward to tasting that one. This here is Ice Princess, so there's a lot of fruit on that. Uh, one, maybe the crispest apple I've ever eaten. It's got to be close anyway. It's like crisper than thou. I'm actually really enjoying uh, finishing this other seedling apple. 2015 number two, Williams Pride Vixen. Yeah, it's nice. It has a nice flavor, nice texture. It's very juicy. It's fun to eat. I don't think this is a well-developed specimen. Uh, I think this apple is going to be better than this, and it's already pretty good. So this is a promising one. Here's a bite me tree. So this started growing right there. This is just a tiny little spindly thing. Started right there this year. It looks like around three and a half feet, maybe, of growth this year, and it's still growing. And this is on one of those big biochar pits, right? It's just full of garbage and, uh, you know, food waste and charcoal. And that apple is very happy. But I leave like a hose dripping on that once in a while, so it's managed to keep going. This is what I want when I'm training a first year tree. It's called a maiden or a whip, and it's just a, a tall straight stick. But if you can grow them out like this, you know, this, this tall, unless you're training your trees super high because you want to be able to, you know, walk under them or have cattle or keep them well above like, you know, large grazing animals. You know, this will be tall enough to get all my branches set in one year. So that's pretty much ideal situation for training year two. 